Hey, this is Ben Brill coming at you with another book summary for creative people. But this one's a DVD, a PBS documentary on Jim Henson, the man who made the Muppets. I highly recommend this because you get to see his earliest work. He started in the late 50s. Uh, so you see how he started and the whole progression through the years is just incredible how, it, how his work evolved. If I had to pick somebody to be just like, I can finally say I know who it would be. It's it's Jim Henson because his calling and what everybody else said was that he was just out there to do good and to provoke joy in people. When he started a series, his series Fraggle Rock, he wanted it to be an international show that would stop war. And he, he understood kids really well. He's a quotation here. I'm going to go through my notes. He says... Kids don't remember what you try to teach them. Kids remember who you are. With these talks, I'm going to go through the notes and we'll hear a little bit about his story. And then I'll leave you with a takeaway that you could apply to your own life. Jim says, getting into puppetry isn't something that many people plan on. Uh, you fall into it. And that, that was the case with him. He grew up in a rural town, just him and his brother and family, but he always knew he wanted to be in TV. So right after high school, actually in high school, he got a job at a TV studio and they just gave him this puppet thing to run. And he ended up liking it a lot and making that, that project really big. And not too long into that, he met a, met a girl who became his wife and they were working together doing the voices and making the puppets act. Right from the start when he was doing puppet work, he had this, he innovated this way to make them talk. Most puppets at the time were just like, blah, blah, blah. But Jim started making them, he called it attacking the words, like blah, 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 blah. So if you watch any of any of his stuff, you'll notice they're animated. Oh, there go the lights. There we go. Anyhow, so Jim Henson, and his couple of friends who became his business partners later on started getting some commercial work with these puppet shows. He was making puppet commercials for coffee brands or food, that sort of thing. And that's when he started making money doing this. And he said he just wanted the commercials to be as dumb and goofy as possible. And people loved him. And the brands that were represented started doing really well. Like, immediately, because he was getting a big following. And so, not too long after high school, Jim was making $100,000. And that was in the late 50s or early 60s. So Jim started a company. He made the Muppets a business. They incorporated. And that's what he did with his team. Not long after that, the people running Sesame Street called him in and wanted to get him involved. And he was resistant to it. I think this is really interesting because Jim never wanted to be boxed in as a children's entertainer. He wanted to relate to everybody. And I'm thinking, wow, that's an incredible opportunity. But just because it wasn't exactly what he wanted, he had a lot of hesitation. But he ended up deciding that, yes, I can use this as a stepping stone. And he, he did it, and he, he did really good work with them. People who worked with him said that he wasn't an overbearing director. He wanted everybody on the team to know that if you have a good idea, I want to hear about it because everybody is a contributor. Our goal is to have the best quality possible. People say he was constantly experimenting, and if something seemed impossible, there was one part they wanted to get Kermit to ride a bike, and it was just a really arduous task. But he figured out a way to do it. And the big idea that I get from learning about his life that ties everything, that pulls everything together, is about integration. For him, working hard was really fun. He was doing what he loved to do, and it didn't feel like work. So you can say that his joy and his talents were integrated completely into his life. That's, what, that's all he did. He wasn't doing this on the side. Part one of the question I have for you is what do you have like that? 
that you f- you know you're working really hard, but it doesn't feel like work. And what's one way that you can integrate that in some way, some small way you can you can make it fit in your day to day life? My answer to that is a weekly regimen of videos that I produce. But I'm just going to do that and stick with it. That's how I'll start to integrate what I care about. There it goes again. Well, all right. Good night, everybody. I'll talk to you later.